Hey guys, what's going on? Hillside Gardener back with you. Uh, a couple weeks ago I put a video out about releasing uh, ladybugs into my greenhouse to deal with my aphid problem. Well, uh, they did a fine job. And what you're looking at right there, that is a baby ladybug. Yes, that is a larva of a ladybug that hatched. Uh, it's still asleep. It's early in the morning here. But I'm sure as soon as the sun warms up, uh, gets a little blood temperature, uh, goes up, it's going to be completely active and going back to work. So that's awesome. Uh, that's a good, good sign. Um, yeah, so when I released ladybugs, it was a nice, cool stretch, unseasonably cool stretch. Only had highs in the 60s uh, in mid-June, so that was that was crazy. But that allowed me to keep the door shut, the vent shut for the greenhouse, basically trap the ladybugs inside. So they had nothing better to do besides sit here and munch down all of the aphids. And you know what? They did a pretty good job because there's very few aphids left in this greenhouse. So using nature and uh, natural processes, I have able to uh, eliminate the aphid problem, but also providing a uh, little micro ecosystem here for these ladybugs who are obviously happy because, you know, well, they're making babies. So there's one right there. Let's see if you can zoom in on another one over here. There's another one right there, which is awesome. And there's another couple over here. But I mean, honestly, kind of zoom back here a little bit. My peppers are at least five feet tall as we speak, and this is 12 feet long, so this is just one row of peppers right there, and there's three of the ladybug larvae on top just hanging out. I'm sure there are tons, tons more in there. So yeah, I'd say the uh, releasing the ladybugs was a very, very good, uh, good thing. Had some awesome results, didn't use any pesticides. Uh, nature took care of nature. But yeah, in this uh, greenhouse environment, there are probably a lot less predators um, for the aphids, so they're able to kind of multiply. And uh, I did find out where the ants were coming in. There was a stream of ants that were just bringing it in. Um, the ants, if you don't know, will uh, basically farm the aphids. They'll purposely carry them, place them on the plants. The aphids suck out the sap, uh, which they excrete, which is called the honeydew, which I guess is the sugars and things like this. The ants then come and eat the honeydew. So. I get it, it's, it's just part of nature, but you know, in a, a greenhouse environment like this, there's no natural checks and balances, so I had to bring in some, some uh, ladybugs that did the work. I'm sure there probably are still a few aphids hanging around because the larvae over here, uh, they obviously have to eat something, so there's at least something going on in here that's controlled. So that's all you're really trying to get is that natural balance. If this were outside in the garden, um, there are predatory wasps. There are beneficial uh, butterflies, insects, spiders, etc. And there are also bad bugs out there as well. But they all all play play a role. So uh, that being said, let me just uh, show you something over here. I uh, just kind of noticed, and I was uh, checking out this morning. Let me uh, take you along over here. Uh, I had some extra, these are the, uh, let's say Jackson Wonder Lima Beans. They're supposed to be a bush bean. Um, they're not really so much a bush bean as they are vining up these uh, little TP trellises here. Not a big deal. And I wonder if that has something to do with being grown inside of the greenhouse. But I figured uh, I'd give it a shot. Had some of these old seeds. I just kind of wanted to put them out and get, get them used up. So not a big deal. But check all these cool flowers out. If you've never stopped and just looked at just flowers on beans, they are pretty fascinating. You gotta get kind of close and this camera's not doing it justice. But yeah, just take some time in your garden or your greenhouse. Look at the different flowers on just the plants. It's, it's fascinating. I know a lot of times we are so worried about growing food. We're worried about the outcome, the process. We want, we want the ripe tomato. We want the beans. We want the corn. We don't stop to check out how the plants are actually growing. You know, check out how the roots are developing, how the flowers look, you know, uh, just take the whole thing in. Because when you worry too much about production, you're going to start doing things that you shouldn't. That's when you're going to start adding tons of artificial fertilizers because the plants aren't green enough or the plants aren't tall enough or the flowers aren't blooming enough. So you're going to throw on some of the bloom boosters and such things like this. It's going to try to artificially just give that plant a little uh, jolt of something so for the instantaneous result. But if you build your soil up correctly and you take care of your plants, you take care of your soil, they're going to take care of themselves. Because I always try to tell people, you know, we plant gardens, we plant flowers, we do these things, but we don't actually grow the plants. That's nothing we can do. We don't grow these plants. We provide them the opportunity to 
establish himself in good soil and they'll take care of the rest you know in this greenhouse i have to bring water in because it doesn't rain inside of the greenhouse so that's my that's my contribution i have to bring in soil amendments and things like this i get it so it's not 100 percent natural because it is an artificial enclosure but in order to keep deer out and you know just provide a longer climate etc cetera, etc cetera, you got to do some things but you're also you're mimicking nature you're not trying to force something like a hydroponic system or an aquaponic system or something that would be you're never going to find it in nature but uh anyhow i'll stop rambling on about that that's my little soapbox for the day but yeah we don't grow the plants we allow the plants to grow we set them up for success and they do what they do and the results i'm sure if you can see here are speaking for themselves i mean it's june 29th i got tomatoes that are legitimately crowding the top of this roof uh I need to go trim it back i guess i don't know what to do this cherry tomato plant is just absolutely out of control uh this is probably almost over 10 feet tall honestly it's, it's ridiculous and there are tons and tons of flowers and little clusters of cherry tomatoes up in there but uh yeah anyways that's what i got for today uh just the aphids uh have been under control due to the ladybugs and the ladybug larvae that are now present on the plants i mean this is a five feet tall wall of peppers which is insane because when i planted this i did never thought they would get this big i have too many peppers in here so they're all crowded together i've done the best i can to keep them staked up and all these things but i mean what are you supposed to do i mean they're just getting huge and huge and i mean i prune the lower leaves and try to keep it air circulation down there to prevent some you know build up of too much humidity and cause uh powdery mildew and all these other kind of things that result from being uh poor airflow but you know what are you gonna do uh well i'll let you guys go for now i just want to give you kind of a quick update and show off to the greenhouse and talk about some plants but uh thanks for watching guys hope you enjoyed it uh we'll see you next time